class, this is Mr. Weissman, and I am going to be walking you through your Chapter 3 project. Um, chapter 3 is a uh, chapter on exponential and logistic uh, curves, but um, we're going to stretch a little bit, and uh, we're going to be working on our Desmos graphing calculator, which is the online calculator that I've been using in class quite a bit. It's fantastic. Some of you use it at home. Um, some of you might not, and I want you to uh, get familiar with it. It's something you can definitely use in college. It's one of the best online tools, I would say, available to us right now. Um, the breakdown of your uh, grade for your project is uh, on the screen right now. So if you are able to copy what I do exactly, you will get a 70%. Um, it's, you're, you're, you're basically just... Um, getting familiar with Desmos with, uh, you know, not, not much more going on. Um, if you're able to include a couple of your own functions, um, and you'll see what that means as we go through the project, your grade will go up. And then uh, if you include a, a circle, which is um, conics, which is coming up later in the year, then your grade, uh, that's the challenge piece for your 100%. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Desmos Graphing Calculator, and I'm going to show you um, kind of what the final product looks like to start, and then we will back up and, and work on this project. So um, right now I've got two points that I can move around on the screen, and that in itself is actually kind of a, a neat challenge. Um, but uh, after we have two points, we will make a line that will go through the two points, and... It, it's, it's a graphing program, it's a graphing utility, you're going to have to set up the line properly. After we do a line, we'll do the quadratic where um, you've, you've done these questions for homework and for quizzes, but you have one point that's a vertex and the other point is a line on, or a point on your uh, quadratic. After that, we will look at an exponential curve and Exponential curves are what we've been working on this chapter, um, and I will help you out with that. Um, then, after exponential, you will be making your own unique curve. So I chose a sine curve, and uh, this black line here, this is the, the base curve, and then the transformed sine curve is this blue one. Um, your challenge piece will be to make a circle um, that uh, has one point is the center and the other point is um, a point on the edge of the circle. You see, you see I, I put some interesting colors in there just to, uh, to show you um, possibly how to color things up. Um, and then the other functions you're going to need to do is you're going to have to do an x cubed function that will have one point at the uh, origin and the other point is going to be your stretch and you're going to have to do a, a logistic um, or sorry a log function a log base 10 or you could actually make it log base whatever you want um, during our demonstration maybe we'll change the base so you'll know how to do that um, and so let's get started I'm going to open up a new Desmos page so I'm going to um, go to desmos.com and uh, if you can see that people just do the uh, craziest um, pictures and everything, you can, you can have a lot of fun with this program. But we're going to launch the Desmos calculator. And it's loading for us. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to create, um, I don't think it's quite ready. Um, I want to create a point. So I'm going to create, uh, and I'm actually going to want to create two points. So I'm going to go to the alphabet piece and get very used to this button right here, the A sub B. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to say X sub 1, comma, X, uh, y sub 1. Um, and then what I'm going to do is it says add slider. I'm going to say add both sliders. 
So that gives us a point at x1, y1 where it's going to default to 1, 1. And you can take the slider and you can move it and you'll see the point move, or you can actually take the point and move it and you'll see the sliders move. Um, so that's going to be our first point. And then our second point, we're just going to do x, go back to the alphabet, sub 2, comma, and you guessed it, y sub 2. And we'll add those sliders. So now we have another one, and again, you can either use the sliders to move it, or you can grab the point and move it on its own. So now we have two points here. Um, there's a lot of equations that we're going to be working with, so then what we're going to do is we're going to include add item, and we're going to choose folder. We're going to call that points. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we have to basically drag each piece into points. And you'll see this little line appear, so you'll know that it's in the folder. Um, if you don't get it in, you'll see when you collapse the folder, you'll see something still um, appearing there. So our points are now in this folder, and we can move them around. Next step we're going to do, we're going to make our first, we're going to make a line. So we're going to say y equals mx plus b. Okay, and you could add sliders, um, and we're not going to here, but if you add the sliders, um, you could control where the line is. But we actually want to define the m and the b based on where our points are. And so m is the slope of the line, which is uh, the rise over the run, or y sub 2 minus y sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Um, and now you'll see there's only one add slider, it's just for b. Um, if you solve for b, you can plug in y1 x1 or y2 x2 and solve for b you just basically it will end up being um, b equals y minus mx um, but we have to make it one of our points not just the variables so um, we'll say y1 and x1 and when we do that we actually have already completed our line um, so we're calculating the slope of the line by finding the rise over the run between the two points. And we're finding our intercept by solving for b. Um, you've done this on paper since probably around eighth grade, and uh, now you're um, doing it on the computer. And it's actually really fun to, to move around. Now, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a table. And so the table can be x, and then y is going to equal mx plus b. Um, and then let's say we'll say like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And if you see the points are showing up on the graph and, um, and they move with the equation as well. And you can see them, the table moving on the left, you can see them moving on the graph on the right. Um, and that's uh, pretty interesting. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, let's learn about domain restrictions. Let's um, restrict this. So the line is only going from negative 3 to 3, let's say. So we're going to say 3 is less than x is less, sorry, negative 3 is less than x, which is less than 3. And now we have a line that's only going um, where the table is. Um, kind of interesting. And uh, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to say, Okay, that, that's cool. So now let's um, let's make one more line, um, basically behind the line. And if you click and hold on this, you can make it a dotted line. So now we have like a dotted line. Um, I'm going to make this line. If I click and hold, I'm going to color it black. So now I have a dotted line extending forever, and then a black line going from one point to the next. Um, we're done with our line. And so now what I'm going to do is organize it. I'm going to say, okay, well, let's make a folder. Let's call it line. And let's drag our table into the line. Um, sorry, I'm having trouble dragging this stuff in. So I drag one equation, two equations, table, my M, and my B. 
So now I can hide that and um, it's just a lot neater. So we've got two points, we've got a line. If you don't want to see the points, you can click on this, the points go away, click back, they come back, click here, and we don't have a line anymore. Um, click back and there it is. And again, we can move the line around. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to hide the line now and we're going to make a uh, quadratic equation. Um, one of the points will be the vertex um, and one of the points will be a point on the quadratic. So first y equals x to the second power. Um, nice and simple, right in the middle. Um, and uh, now what we want to do is we want to make one of the points, um, we'll say the x1, y1 point, our vertex. So if we, uh, if we subtract x1, and this is just our transformations, um, x sub 1, now the equation moves with our x1. It doesn't follow our, the y position, but um, it moves with our x. And then, um, get if you've guessed it right, you would add y sub 1. Sub 1. Now, we've got our uh, quadratic following a point. Um, and it's fun. Play with it. I mean, it, it is kind of fun to play with. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to worry about the the stretch, um, and you're, everything's going to disappear because it's unhappy because we, it doesn't know what a is. If you go and you solve for a um, using y2 and x2, um, you're going to get y2, and then, so this y becomes y2, and then you're going to subtract y1 from it. So you're going to say a equals y2 minus y1. Um, and then you're going to divide the x portion divided by, and you can actually even copy this if you want. So to get rid of the, the part with the a, you divide. But you're not dividing x, you're dividing x2. Um, and then you'll see that we are still following our vertex, and then what's controlling the A, we've got the other point is a point on the parabola. Um, and now we're going to make another table, and we'll go again from negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. We're going to define Y as the equation, so we're going to say y equals this, and that gives you points from negative 3 to 3 that are on the um, quadratic equation, and you'll see the, the values when you substitute x in um, over on the, on the left, and you'll see them move with the graph. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to restrict the domain, so negative 3 is less than x is less than 3. Um, oops. I, uh, and so now we have the quadratic function, and it only goes from three to from positive three to negative three, and um, it's kind of neat. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another line, or sorry equation behind this, I'm going to say, and just copy the whole thing. Um, let's make this one black, and let's make this one dotted. So now we have um, a black piece going from negative 3 to positive 3. Um, and th the reason I'm doing this here is just to show you how to restrict um, the domain values. Um, and uh, I'm going to play with it for a second, and then we are going to clean it up by making another, we're not making a table, by making another folder, and we'll call it um, quadratic. Um, you can drag these around, so I'll put underneath, and then I'm going to drag everything into the, all the quadratic pieces into the quadratic folder. Um, and uh, now we can turn it off, turn it on, turn on a line. We can actually have both of them going at the same time. Um, 
and we're going to turn those off. Um, after we've got the line and the quadratic, we are going to do y equals e to the x. Okay, so now um, this one is not following along yet, but our transformations, put parentheses around the x, we'll say minus x sub 1. Um, and when you're in the exponent, if you hit right, that's what's bringing us out, plus y sub 1. Um, and now it's going to follow this point. Now it's following this point. Um, this is your 0. So it's not going through the point because our uh, exponential function, the, the base function doesn't go through the 0, 0, but it follows as if uh, it were 0, 0. Um, then we're going to stretch the equation with this point. So we're going to put an a, uh, now we can't just put a here um, because we're already using the variable a. So I'm going to say a2. Um, it's going to want to add a slider. But we're not going to do that. What we're going to do instead is solve the equation as if this was y2 and x2. We're going to solve for a2. So we're going to say a2 equals and we want it to be y2, and then we'll subtract the y1 from both sides, minus y1. And then we're going to divide by this e to the, and when we're solving for the equation, we will have plugged in x2 here, so x2 minus x1. So now our point is um, on the, on the, uh, on our graph, this is where our zero used to be, and we've got our transformations going. Um, we can then quickly make a table. Um, let's bring the table down to the bottom, and y is going to equal our equation, and then we'll say x goes from negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. Um, and then we will Restrict the domain again. Um, so negative 3 is less than x, less than 3. And we just see that part that's from 3 to 3. If we bring it around, um, it's kind of fun. Let's make it black so it stands out. Oops. Um, where'd I put it? I just, I think I just dumped it into. Um, quadratic folder. Okay, so I'm going to click and hold, make it black, and I'm going to copy the equation. I'm just copying it and making a new equation without the domain restriction. Um, give it a dotted line, make it a lighter color. Um, and then uh, I like putting the black one second so it draws the black on top of the green. So then we can see the entire thing, and we can see also just the pieces that are in our table. Um, now we're going to make a folder. We're going to move the folder to the bottom and drag our elements into the folder. Okay, so um, let me make sure we've got everything here. Um, Okay, so now, uh, and we can hide it, we can show our quadratic. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to make f of x equals whatever you want, x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus sine of x. Um, and so we've got this function, and um, I'm going to help you out here. You're going to have f of x, and you're going to put minus something, minus, um, I'm going to help you a little more than that, x1 plus, well, I, I'm not going to help you more than this, plus something will go here with your transformations. 
you're going to multiply it by an A3. Um, you'll mess with it and um, you'll get you know, something interesting going on there. Um, that's your challenge that you've got to get to. Um, you're also going to do x cubed, y equals x cubed. Get the transformations, put them in a folder, and that will, uh, that will give you 5% to this project. y equals log, and if you want to do log, you can do log. If you want to um, if you hit functions here, I think it's under miscellaneous. Um, no. Uh, you can do log base. Three, if you want to base, log base three of x. Um, and then you're going to have to do the transformations just like we did above. Um, and then uh, the circle, um, you're going to have a radius equals x squared plus y squared. You're going to have to define the radius, and um, the x and the y are going to have shifts, so you're going to have a minus sign with the x, a minus sign with the y, and then you're going to have to solve for the r to get um, the, the function working there. Um, you can play with greater than and less than things to, um, to get some colors. Um, right now I'm, I'm actually just doing some extension stuff. If you want to, uh, if you were to do something like greater than and then show this, that's how you get um, colors is with the greater than and less than signs, um, and then this one could be less than, um, and you get some neat looking things. So the green is greater than everything, um, the black is when you're less than, just the interval in the middle, um, and uh, I am absolutely just playing right now, um, because that's what I would expect you to do. If we go back to our other... Uh, our old one, again, you have to do one of these, one of these, to do a circle, um, and this is how your circle should react. You can try to have some interesting colors in there if you'd like, um, you know, play around a little bit. Um, and you've got the exponential curve, you've got the line, you've got the quadratic, got your 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 own function and that's the project I hope you enjoy this project you have um, you can ask me for help I'll be happy to talk to you about it I won't give you the answers but um, I'm at your service enjoy and I will see you in class thanks bye